Hello everyone, welcome back to another Warno preview video for the Banner Dot Milestone as we have a lot of changes to come and the most important one I believe for most players out there in this patch will be this here. If you go to multiplayer and you get to create you can now host army general in multiplayer in co-op and in versus with up to four players so up to 2v2 or four player co-op on one side which is really, really cool and should be a lot of fun to play with. And yeah, I'm for sure going to have some playthroughs with Multiplayer Army General on the channel and for sure on Twitch in the upcoming weeks as well. And yeah, that's part number one. And now let's have a look into Armory and then in the end we will have a look on the new game mode as well. And let's start with our First Nation. Uh, which is the US and we also got some bug fixes uh, before we jump in here as we, we got bug fixes for a couple of important things military police now is functioning as it's supposed to be and more importantly auto loaders are now functioning as they should be so TADBVs ain't overperforming that heavily anymore plus there is a change uh, for reactive armor which now only brings in uh, plus one hit points instead of plus two so they only have 11 hit points all the units with era and that for sure is a big nerf to the tadbv uh, line and we have some other buffs to some nato uh, high-end tanks as well which we will get to so uh, the tank balance especially in team games should be more in line again between both nations and then we will get to a couple of other tornadoes throughout the tree as well but let's get into the us tree and let's start in the air tab where we have a really cool new unit here the ef 111a raven which is a new kind of weapon in uh, wano we have three uh, we have this one and we have a another electronic warfare plane over in the uh soviet three with an stu 24 as a e warfare plane and they have really high ecm themselves they also spot like seed planes enemy air uh, air defense uh, so you know so you can bomb them with other units plus they also give all the other planes in a big radius 20 percent extra ecm as well so your other planes are a lot more survivable currently you only get them over here in 8 and in 39 so they are not that common but it's another nice start of introducing E-Warfare, which in the 80s was a big part. Together with helicopters now, the, the helicopters all are fixed now. All the E-Warfare helicopters now have 40 ECM and very good optics next to the trade. So uh, the very good optics now on the Mi-8 and on the Puma Heat as well. So that's some nice changes as well. But let's continue here with the Americans as the Air 3 also has another big two changes here with F-16 now coming with really a good amount of speed they finally got the extra speed bump all F-16s also the Belgian one so the Belgian one only got its damage on the missiles reduced but it's the extra speed here really great so 1124 like other mid range fighters in speed and that is a really really big buff to the f-16s and all the decks that rely on it you also got a new f-16c aa version here for the 11th acaf with double am9 amps so a cqc one which is a good bit cheaper and yes the extra speed here on the f-16s and especially also the f-4 especially the ground attack versions of both planes as they can get in and out a lot faster now F-16 uh, with the very good agility, really quick out there again as well, and the 30% ECM, so really good buff to these planes, which needed to come for so long, and it finally is here, so I'm really happy with that. F-16 is now performing a lot better, so that's one big buff for the Americans here out right, uh, of the start. Um, then we, we have a couple of price changes here as well. But, um, yeah, we have in the helicopter tab a couple of availability changes to little birds. They come in slightly higher availability. And then the uh, Toko 
Cobra and no, the normal Cobra, the Eta and the Heavy Hawk being slightly more expensive, uh, and the AA Cobra, the Eta's being slightly cheaper. So there are a couple of price changes in that regard. Uh, so the Americans getting some changes there. Then in the infantry tab, we have the air mobile, slightly more expensive with dragons. They go from 75 to uh, 80 points, so they are now a slight bit worse, which obviously not the biggest of nerfs. Uh, Green Berets in uh, Berliner also going from 55 to 60 points. A lot of the forward deploy infantry got that 5 point price buff, uh, or, or nerf rather. So there are a lot of changes in that regard. And then, uh, which we will see in other factions as well, engineers getting cheaper, which is a good change in my eyes, um, as we haven't seen engineer play much lately and CQC infantry really not being used much, at least uh, as long as they weren't special forces. So engineers across the board in all nations, the normal standard one TNT, one MG, nine rifle, 10 man squad, going from 45 to 40 points. So they might be more uh, important again here. And that's all nice changes here to the infantry. Uh, the MP leader also going down in price. National Guard fire team leader going slightly down in price. And then we have a lot of changes in the tank tab. Uh, it's, the most important ones are the side armor changes, which are over most uh, most nations as well. The normal M1s here going down to 7. Uh, the side armor from 8, for example, the normal M1. but And the M1A1 going down from 9 to 8. So side shots on all tanks are more efficient again. Should be a nice buff to all flanking kind of small tanks or... A light ATGMs that hit tanks from the side armor. Really good change, really nice change. And then the second big change to both the M1A1 line and the Leo 2 line is that they all get faster. The uh, M1s, the normal ones, go up to 72 kmh. Obviously lighter armored, so they have a bit more power here. The M1A1 and the M1A1 HA go up to 68 kmh speed. So that makes their dynamic against enemy... Uh, so, or especially Soviet heavier tanks against the T-80s, a lot more interesting as they can now catch up or the small M1 even outrun them. And that means that they can't kite you as easily with ATGMs, gems and then if they don't hit, run away. Uh, which the ADBs, especially in bigger team games on more open maps, were quite capable of doing. So nice change there. Um, and yeah, will make the M1s a good bit better. And then also uh, the stabilizer drop for M1s and for Leo 2s is only 5%. So here it's 65 to 60 uh, for all the Leo uh, M1, M1s over here. So that's a nice change as well to all of these tanks. The M551 ACAF and the M551 Sheridans here going up slightly in price as well. As far as support, so a couple of nerfs here to 82nd and in, in the tank tab. Uh, as the laugh also goes up five points and especially more importantly goes down in stealth to mediocre. Same happened to the fox, so no more super stealthy uh, recon vehicle here. Still has very good optics, but it, uh, it costs you 75 points now, so a bit more balanced. It still is a strong vehicle, you still should use it in 82nd. It's just not going to be as frustratingly OP, uh, especially if you try to kill it with like ATGM helicopters and so on. They can't, or ATGM teams, and they just can't spot it before it's in range. That was sometimes really annoying to deal with these flankers, and they still will be strong. They just won't be OP anymore, which is a good change as well. And then, uh, yeah, those are the changes here. We also have a couple of renaming conventions. Mech rifles now being renamed Mech Rifle Dragons uh, when they have a dragon. And so on. There's an HE and cluster renaming for the M270s and so on, but it, that's all naming conventions. And then when we come to divisions, um, 11th now got buffed a bit. F16 speed buff, really important for that deck. And then we have the M1A1 ACAF coming now in one card of two instead of two cards of only one tank. So the M1A1 ACAF buff to 11th, quite nice. Uh, and it also 
got a card of MacRaffle Dragons instead of the MacRaffle Laws now. Plus, it got uh, the EH60A quick fix as well. So, you got a bit, couple more recon options for the second a M1A1A cap that you would have taken. For example, you might now take the quick fix and uh, have a bit more options there. And, or you can take the M1A1A cap also with one level of veterancy now. So, all of that is pretty nice. So you have some potential in that recon tab, uh, and in 11th in general, the engine, the Macraft Dragons also helping out holding flanks a bit better, whilst your main line of M1A1 is pushing forward. And as I said, the F16 buff there, quite big as well. Uh, 24th got a slight nerf, the Kiova Warrior got removed, and in 82nd uh, they added a couple a cut of stingers next to the price changes. So in general, 82nd. Uh, got obviously nerfed, and they lo lost a lot of units there with the... Um, or, like, not lost, but a good couple of them got more expensive uh, with the um, Sheridans and with the Love, but... and the Dragon uh, Airborne as well, but they are still a strong division. And then 8th uh, got the Raven, the E-Warfare Raven, but, yeah, that's about it. So, let's move on to the next nation being the UK. And the British uh, get a couple of changes to the infantry tab. The air mobile leader went up five points. Uh, the armed rifles went up uh, five points as well to reduce the warrior spam a bit. Uh, the assault pioneers going down in price. Um, the assault pioneers here, their TNT unit is has double MG, so that's why it's uh, 45 instead of 40 points, uh, but yeah, nice price change here as well. All Pioneer is a good bit better. And then in the Recon tab, the Air Mobile Scouts, they went down to 45 points as well, but they lost one availability, but that's still a good unit. That's still an eight-man fire support unit with a uh, decreased to seven availability, but the 45 points make them really cost-efficient combat f uh, force to deal with enemy infantry with their uh, quadruple MG fire here, so good unit for sure for that part. Um, nice change there as well, making them less of a spam, but more of a uh, cost-efficient recon unit. Good idea here in my eyes. And then we have blowpipes reduced in availability. I'm not sure if that's really super necessary, but yeah, blowpipe spam a bit lower. Um, and then we have in the tank tab a couple of interesting buffs and Changes side armor uh, decreased on most spots. Chieftain lost top armor as well. Uh, Chieftain side armor didn't get changed, but the the, the challenger Mark III, which also obviously has one less hit point due to uh, the era, could go down f uh, five to ten points in my eyes as well. Now that the era got nerfed, the difference here is not as m massive anymore. Though it, I mean, the still the extra penetration there is still helpful. Um, but yeah, it has now 8 instead of 10 side armor. But the Chieftain Mark 10, Mark 9, and Mark 11 all got 5 points cheaper, uh, including the leader versions. And their base availability increased from 5 to 10, uh, from 5 to 6, sorry, uh, for the Chieftain Mark 10 and 11. And the Mark 9 increased from 7 to 8. So, Chieftains. Are better again and a bit more cost efficient. So, first UK there should get a nice buff out of that. And another option that you will have with them is in the recon tab where uh, the Scorpion now is 40 instead of 45 points. Though at the same time, the Skimitar went up to 55 points and the Fox went up 5 points as well to 65 points. So, it stays 10 points cheaper than the Lav but obviously also lower optics and, and lower frontal armor there instead of uh, compared to the love, which will be interesting. Uh, the F-105 Sultan in the logistics tab also went up to 80 points uh, because, yeah, at 70 points it was too cheap. This one is also still really cheap. <laughs> First UK, they're a bit lucky with how cheap their commanders are. One might have been overlooked. 
Um, but yeah, Sultan there going up slightly in price. Javelin LML increased in price, and it might have some. It might not be able to get into buildings anymore. I'm not sure if that's gonna stay. Uh, but yeah, that's something that happened as well. And then infantry SAS going up in price as well. But that's part of a bigger rework because that's what something we're gonna get into in a, in a second. Um, yeah, terrier base availability also going down to 10 from 12. So they're not quite as spammable. And then we have uh, the couple of changes to second UK, which we will have a look into because that division really changed the most out of all the existing divisions. Uh, got folks, f uh, first of all, that weird rover supply truck here. Not quite sure why it's 25 points. Um, would be 20 points, but oh yeah, that's that's going to change. Um, and then, as you can see, no more Germans in the stack. So that's an interesting change. It got a couple of other new toys for it, though. First of all, a couple more airmobile units here with motorized airmobile, showing you that the other airmobile now comes in only air transports, including a new Lynx rocket version with snap rockets, which you can... Co co come bring, uh, bring to the front line, or the Airmobile Pioneers coming in a Chinook as well. So, interesting changes there. As I said, SAS is going up a bit as most forward deploy high-level units did. You also get now an M270 MLRS here as cluster ammo. Tank tap is the same. Recon tap now or like tank tap is the same British ones, obviously losing the German ones, so that's a quite the big change there. And then we got interesting transport options for the javelins and blowpipes. If you really want to bring them in the gazelles, you can do that now. These guys here all staying the same. And then helicopter, we got a new really cool unit, the first top attack missile in Wano, in the Fito. That's why 16 penetration here is not that uh, low, because with 16 penetration, it will one-shot everything with two front uh, top armor, and it will two-shot everything with three and above top armor. So this is really, really deadly with its ATGMs. It's deadlier than any other kind of ATGM out there when it comes to the damage output. It obviously doesn't have the max range, and the Vito is also not the fastest of the ATGMs there, so um, what you have in L arms and so on might still be better, but it's really scary. Like, scarier than even 25 penetration or 24 penetration Vickers and so on, and uh, for sure it's uh, around as scary as a 30 damage uh, aircraft to ground ATGM here. So, Vito... Really interesting new addition to this deck as well. And then we have... Yeah, that's the changes here. Um, in the Berlin command, there they changed the Berlin light rifles now. One ri The rifles there got removed. And they got a new unit. Uh, we have a look in the infantry tab. They have no normal rifles anymore. They have RAF rifles. Um, and they have Grandia Volt Gears with sniper rifles now as a new infantry unit. So, no normal uh, AT rifles to, oh, from the British anymore. Uh, RAF rifles instead. So, AT power here a bit lower now. Uh, you don't have any low 80s anymore at hand, which for sure will nerf the infantry anti tank capabilities of this deck. And you will have to fight and uh, other solutions for that. Quantity of Voltage years, maybe. Uh, the sniper version, pretty interesting. Oh no, you, you get the new Berlin Light Rifles. Right. Uh, Law 80 here. Um, and Chalk. So, I talked... Yes, it's a new unit. Berlin Rifles. For the British. Um, yeah. So, pretty strong unit. Pretty strong unit, <laughs> actually. And you have the Kurdia Voltage FRF2. That's pretty interesting. So the infantry tab of Berlin Command coming more unique and stronger as well. Like the FRF2 here, really interesting version as well with the sniper rifle. 
And yeah, that's the changes here. So let's move on to the West Germans. And here we start in the air tab as well. As Alpha Jets got all put onto 90 points, which is a buff to the HE version and nerf by five points uh, to the cluster and a buff by 30 points for the Napalm uh, one. The Alpha Jet Rocket, which must be around somewhere as well, uh, went up by five points as well. I'm not quite sure, is that a British unit, Alpha Jet Rocket? No, it's, it's not a unit in here at the moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Alpha Jet Rocket went up five points as well, but I don't think it exists at the moment. Um, then we have f 104s going up in price, which in my eyes was needed. Uh, these in TKS were really, really strong, uh, and they were quite oppressive. On the other side, Gina is going down in price as well, and obviously all the F4s is getting faster, so in general a buff to the German air tree uh, by a good bit, like especially the speed on the F4s will change a lot for the other two German decks, and then the Gina is getting cheaper. So the price chain, uh, the price nerf to the F104 getting balanced out there uh, together with the Alpha Jets being a bit cheaper as well. Um, that for sure is going to change a good bit. And yeah, all the F4s being faster. And then the changes continue um, in the AA tab where we will see the Flieger Faust reduced in availability from 15 to 12. So you can't as easily take it with a lot of uh, veterancy anymore. Uh, you might have to take it on lower veterancy now, which is fine. And then, um, yeah, Fanspear got reduced in availability from five to four, which is the normal availability for all GSR units. They, that was just an oversight beforehand. So that's quite normal as well. And then when we move into the infantry tab, we now see a nerf to Falter Meters by 5 points. As I said, most for deploy special, uh, special force kind of units got a slight nerf. Uh, the Falter Meters got hit here as well. The openers and second Panzer Grenadiers of those were pretty obnoxious, so it makes sense to nerf them slightly. Panzer Faust 3 also pretty strong weapon. Jaegers go down uh, 5 points, so they might be a worthwhile option here now in TKS. Uh, if you just want to have some more infantry in general, as you can see, yeah, together with the Pioneers here, and uh, the general price buffed to uh, CQC focused infantry that isn't special forces continues reserve pioneers going down in price as well so they might be a, a version that you can consider now as well for 15 points though that's still quite a hefty price and then Sicherung's going up five points and decreased in availability because yeah they were used a lot a lot a lot uh 35 points, still a cheap unit, still has securing straight, so uh, pretty good unit for holding flanks and spotting enemies. So the nerf here makes some sense as well. And then uh, we have in the tank tab a good couple of changes. We have, as I said, the Leo 2A3s now being fast and being a bit more accurate in the motion again. So Leo 2A3s and 2A4s for sure gonna be a lot better especially the speed in my eyes is gonna make them really fun to use and uh, yeah I'm, I'm really happy with that change that was a change that I asked for in a bit and I'm happy to get it uh, they are a more unique tank again now so the M1A1's got, uh, got it to some extent as well but yeah Leo 2A4 cool little unit again and then side armor changes here happening across the board as well from 3 to uh, yeah, down to uh, from five to four here, and three to two on the rear armor, and top armor down to one on the M48s, for example. And on the Leos, they were already pretty low before, so they stayed here. Um, at the Leo ones, they also stayed, and they got a bit cheaper. The Leo one A one, A one going down five points, and the Leo one A five going down ten points, which is absolutely warranted as well. These two units really underperformed last patch. And that's a nice buff to the Germans, which second Panzer Grenadier will be strong again. Like, yes, the Walter Mega nerf did hit a bit, but the buffs here are bigger. So, and they were already pretty strong last patch. Another unit that got slightly nerfed is the Lux. So, 
the balance in second pencil radius kind of, might kind of stay the same, but yeah, that unit going down, uh, again, like going up by five points as well. Uh, so that's that's pretty standard as well. And then all the auto cannon recon units got nerfed a bit. And then in the um, logistic tab, you got slightly cheaper CH helicopters. And in the artillery tab, you get slightly cheaper Lars. Lars now 130 points, so a really affordable MLRS. It's still not a great MLRS, but for 130 points, I will consider taking it. Like, it's the same price nearly as a howitzer now. And it can do some decent stress, just the damage is pretty unreliable. Um, yeah, a couple of changes to second Panzer Grenadiers is that the they decreased the cards of Fliegerfaust from T22. Um, the Falschermager uh, Milan 2 got decreased from 2 to 1 cards, and the Tornado F3AA also got reduced to 1 card so that you can't take as many fighters with the F16 and the Tornado there. So um, the numbers of fighters is a bit reduced as well, so that you can't just spam them out that the enemy potentially can overwhelm you there but you have good air defenses anyways with the f-16 df uh, the tornado and the ihawks on the ground so not the biggest issue in that regard and yep that's that's the main changes there uh territorial commando suit but one of its three-point helicopter slots which was unusable uh removed and got a two-point logi slot instead so that's a nice buff there to tks and yeah that brings us to the next nation being france and in France, we start in the AA tab, where these guys got reduced in speed uh, and in stealth, so they are not as obnoxious anymore. Uh, not super stealthy and not running around with a 20 millimeter that can shred your infantry uh, from afar. Um, so yeah, nice fix there. And the Celtic going down in price a bit from 80 to 70 and going up in availability, so might be worthwhile taking. Uh, again, which is good as well, as that unit here was completely unused, but it has good air-to-air missiles, uh, so really usable air-to-air -air helicopter in its base weapon, and the price and the availability coming up there again as well. I wish it would be 4 availability, or 60 points, uh, a slight buff still necessary in my eyes, but it's nice to see it getting closer. Then, in the infantry tab, Legionnaire Paras as most better uh, uh, or deploy infantry going up five points. So the French get hit here as well. And yeah, that's that's fair. Um, we see Superb Para and Superb Para Flam going down in price. Uh, so um, that and the Superbs here are also going to 40, uh, which is yeah the standard now, as I said. In the artillery tab, we see the AMX R1 going up to 260 points, but that's because it has really, really high rate of fire. It's auto loader basically working now. Uh, yeah, same as the new Soviet auto loader self propelled artillery, and that's really going to destroy uh, the enemy. So nice change as well. Cool, unique artillery piece now. The AMX R1 working out nicely. In the tank tab, we have. A range reduction to the AMX Alf, uh, AMX 30B, which is not having any uh, electric range finder or anything like that, so that's why the range got reduced there. Same to Leo 1A1, um, so it's now 1925, so basically on par of Leo 1A1 there. Still has the auto cannon, which isn't better, but it's also 10 points more expensive, and I'm not sure if it, that really is deserved. It's relatively slow, and um, I mean. Yeah, the auto cannon is nice, I guess. Could see that unit now going down to 85 points potentially, but it's as it also uses the heat rounds. So uh, yeah, on the lower ranges, that's not going to be nearly as that great as it had been on max range. Uh, so MX 30B, interesting unit, uh, could use a price buff uh, in the future, and then the Sagai going. Uh, getting a change in availability and in price. It goes up to 90, which is absolutely warranted. It was really strong at 80. Um, and it only got two cards here now, but that's because it got a commander version now. And 
It got a reconversion. Um, I believe, maybe not. Yeah, no, there we go. ERC ninety Sagai for one hundred ten points. So ten points cheaper than the first MX ten RC, having only good optics though. So <laughs> really high price in comparison to the MX ten RC there, but another recon option here and can come in with the rest of Sagai. So guys, so. Nice uh, changes there as well. A bit more unit variety and a couple new versions here. And um, yeah, a good nerf to the really strong unit here as well. In the air tab, the Jaguar seat going up to 185 points. And, and on the same time, the Mirage F1 C200 going down slightly in price from 90 to 185 points. It was slightly underperforming so that's a fine change as well um, and yep this is going to be interesting 11th lost its swap as all the other airborne divisions now so that is fine as well and yep the belgians next to the changes to the f16a that the am9p has got a slightly reduced in numbers um with, but got faster the uh, mirage got more ecm up to 30 but it also went up uh, 10 points so more kind of buff in my eyes uh to second there and then the recon obviously the skimithar and scorpion press changes the same as the british so yeah let's move on to the pact and start with the soviets there and here we start in the air tab as well as we have the mig 29 aa3 with r27t new air-to-air missile here, uh, which is 10 points more expensive than the other AA uh, MiG-29s here, which on the first part looks wrong because it has lower range and lower base accuracy on its missile, but it is an infrared missile. And that means you can fly away once the missile is still tracking and you uh, it will still track and you w will still potentially hit. So it's easier to use and you don't have to stay on track there with that missile. So the tracking here, important. Still not quite sure if it really warrants the 10 points, but we will figure it out. It's for sure still a good fighter coming in now on 79th as replacement for the MiG-31B, which went over to six. And then we have the E-Warfare SU-24MP here. As explained earlier, it has the 60% high ECM tracks enemy uh, ground radar AA. Uh, so other air units of yours can attack it, and it gives 20% ECM in a radius to all your other planes around, so really makes them nicely survivable against enemy ground units. So nice units there. Obviously, we have the new units up here, uh, which we already talked about earlier. So that's pretty standard there. Uh, we have some price changes to the MiG-27 MT, which got slightly higher in price and slightly lower in availability. And then, yeah. That's it with the aircraft. When we go to helicopters, the M124 VP going down to 215 points, so a good bit cheaper. Uh, that's that's going to be interesting to see if that one will see use now. Uh, yeah, we have uh, also now in the recon tab the new MI, uh, the MI28 MTV now with very, uh, with very good optics going up. 10 points in price, but very good optics, high hit points, and uh, jammer trade, so solid helicopter for sure. And then we can move on to the tank tab, where obviously all the era nerfs did happen. So that's gonna nerf m most of the higher end tanks and some of the mid range tanks as well. T64 BV. Up to 19 penetration again, but yeah, the error nerf hitting here as well. Auto loader now fixed, as I said earlier, so that's a nice change as well. And then we have a couple of buffs. The uh, D44 going down five points, and the uh, version that is uh, forward deployable to 50, and the other one to 45. And then the Sprut also going down five points here to 75 points, so. That's a nice change as well to these units. Rapira going down to 80. Um, yeah, that's cool changes there. And then 
in the recon tab the Rajvetka BMP2 and BMP1P going slightly up in price. Uh, so they aren't as cheap anymore. Uh, the the 75 and 45 points now. As they were 40 and 65 points before. As they were pretty strong. 27th and 79th now. Not quite as OP in the, the tab there. AA, we got a couple of changes as well. Strella 10M and M3 going up a good bit in price, especially the M3 from 110 to 125, but it's one of the best AA pieces in the game. Uh, no, Not being hit by seed, motion accuracy, and great range against helicopters, outranging all helicopters out there, and decent range against aircraft as well for an infrared missile, so 125 points absolutely warranted. And at the same time, we have some other price reductions. For example, uh, the book now only 155 points, so that's a pretty cheap book. Uh, KDA and Six, they are getting a nice buff of that. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting how that plays out. And yeah, how these units will perform out there now. And yeah, TAD UDs and uh, also going slightly down in price uh, for the nerf in side armor and uh, the nerf in the era, so they are slightly cheaper. One, uh, 330 and 305 instead of 340 and 310 points. But yeah, with the nerfs, that's warranted as well. T60s just in general nerfed, so that's fine as well. Infantry tab wise, we got a couple of changes as well with the RKHM and the Superi. Um, Oh no, uh, yeah, the, um, uh, wait. The RKHM is 55 points here, right, that's this little vehicle. Super cheap leader now, but only two availability. Um, and yeah, in the, the Saperi's going down in price uh, in the infantry tab, so that's, that's a classic change there as well. And yeah, outside of that, we have a couple of division changes. Um, 27th loses its BMP transport for Motor Strike Medis. They weren't supposed to have that. Uh, the Ward 19th loses the Mi 24 V AA. As it just wasn't that much of a uh, available helicopter. They get instead the Mi 8 MT Escorty with the R 60M air tail themselves and the, the rockets and so on. But in my eyes, a heavily overpriced unit. All the MI8s could go down 10 more points, and this one could go down 20 more points, uh, or even 30 points, to be cost efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 35th got its uh, got some uh, MiG-27 AT and cluster added, and loses the SU-25 AT and cluster. So 35th uh, going getting a bit of a price change there, uh, and a, a couple of unit changes there. 39th gets BRD D, B, BTRDs as transport for their Dejan PKMs, which is interesting. And yeah, they also get the SU-24 Evofer. And then 79th gets the MiG-29 changes. So that's the part there. So let's move on to the last nation, which is going to be the East Germans. And for the East Germans, we start in the air tab once more, where we have the MiG-29 AA being on the same price now as the Soviet version, which is identical to it. And then MiG-23 BNs got some price buffs. Uh, the AT-1 is the only one that got slightly up to 155, 145 points, but then the cluster version went down in price. And uh, the Napalm version went down in price as well. And the HE, they all went from 185 to 175 points. So being a bit more cheaper, the MiG-23 B, uh, the MiG-21 HE here, the bomber that everybody uses, went up by 10 points. So yeah, makes sense as well. It's a super super fast uh, bomber, for, and it can kill a good couple of units there with its bomb load. So that price price change makes sense as well. Then we have. Changes to the helicopter tabs with 
the slight price reduction to the MI24P going from uh, the AT version going down from 490 to 170 points makes total sense as well. It wasn't the greatest of helicopters out there, so helicopters currently not that strong, so that is totally fine as well. Recon tab BMP1P going slightly up in price. On the other side, we have uh, slight availability to the BT76 going up to 6 availability. BRM1 going down to 55 points. So, uh, in general, slight buff to these units here. Uh, in the AA tab, uh, the Strela 2M going up in avail uh, availability. No, or down to yeah, all the Strela 2Ms. We are down to 12 availability, um, base availability. Uh, on the same side as Stralitain M goes up to 90 points as well. So that makes sense. The Ultra Mega Sprank Towers going, and Anders Cooper going down 5 points to 60 and 65. So that's a uh, price change as well. Sprank Tower now being a bit more efficient. At the same time, in fourth. Their other forward deploy infantry with the Falter Magers and Falter Mega Medis uh, going up slightly in price. They now cost you seven, uh, 80 and 65 points. So that's in general just a bit of a reshuffle there so that you maybe take some other units and the Falter Magers as, just as all the other forward deploy in order to get hit a bit here. Special Force, really strong unit. So makes sense that I get nerfed a bit in that regard. Uh, the UART's DSPG-9 here goes up to good stealth as well, so they are same in that regard. Have more ammo now, are a bit more expensive than the SPG-9 squadrons. That's a good change as well. Um, at the same time, yeah, all the tanks losing some side armor. That's that's across the board here as well. T-54s going down to five side armors and T-55s. And then T-72s going down to 6 side armor here. Got the M2Bs. So side shots in general more deadly here as well. And yeah, that's the changes there. Mod Schützen base availability goes up to 10. So Mod Schützen will have a new interesting new tree. Which is going to be interesting. Pioneers and Pioneer Flam going slightly down in price. Reservisten SMG going down slightly in price as well so nice buff to kda here 30 point unit with triple mg now which might be worthwhile taking now as well um, and then yep we have some changes to c72 side armors as well yet we already had wachschützen rpo going slightly down to 45 points so that's pretty normal as well and then if we have a look at 4th Modschützen, they now get the SVD uh, Modschützen as well, instead of the SMG one. This one only is in Berliner. Uh, the SMD, SVD version of the sniper rifle now is in 7th, 4th and uh, in Berliner. The TO-55 Flammenpanzer also got removed from 7th and 4th. And the 7th also got a bit of a reshuffle there, uh, got a new cleanup basically as well, uh, so yeah, cleanup done with this, as they lose their T55AM, they now are T72s, where they get a new card, and together, so you have five cards of T55s, uh, T72s here now, with two cards of T72 MKs, so if you want T uh, seven cards of T72s, and then only normal T55s. So no long range weapons in this deck anymore. Which is going to play weird. And like, yes, T72s are decent tanks, but the T55s for sure helped out this division in the last patch of Mice. But yeah, it's a T72 deck now, and that's that's going to be interesting. KDA um, got some changes, and they, the BM24M has now two availability per card, but only has one card. Uh, so, you check it out here now. This one might be worth it over the Napalm, for example, or the Smirch, as you get two per card. And the Rockets hit pretty hard, so that's that's a cool thing. And yeah, Belina, we already talked about longer. So, those are the changes here. Let's have a look on the new game mode quickly, and then we're gonna end it.
So the new game mode gives you the option to, or the new option here, command control gives you a 5 or 7% tax chance. I wish there would be a 3% version as well, as I feel like that would be the best way to play. And I believe it will be quite nice in 10v10 anyways. Uh, in smaller games, it might not be as cool. Um, and how it works, you will see here in a second. If we just press start. Um, it reduces our income based on how many units we have, have on the battlefield. It tells you also then when you hover over it, uh, what it is for as some base transport doesn't don't count fully in uh, but yeah it gives us an upkeep of 75 points so we uh, five percent of the units we have on the battlefield so we now only get 185 points and it changes actively with uh, losses and kills uh, that you do and like if you kill enemy units they get slightly more income again and if you bring in more units, it goes lower and lower. So there is a kind of a maximum now on the battlefield, which especially in team games, I kind of like. Uh, in, I wish it would not go fully down though. I feel like the the, the cap should be at uh, fifty percent or forty percent base income, um, and then you can't drop much lower there. But it's an interesting idea of a catch-up mechanic. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to see how it will play out in the long run. Uh, and if that will be the preferred 10v10 mode, I could see that. I really like it there. I don't want it in 1v1, especially not in its current form. It has a lot of potential, though, in my eyes. Uh, but yeah, it will need some work, like in Pumping of Heroes or so. So let me know down below what you think about this game mode and what you would like to see for it to be changed. And yep, yeah, with that said, guys, thanks for watching. And see you all next time. Bye-bye and have a great day.